last week we talked. Uh, maybe we, just we to, stunk. Yeah, just to maybe assess the team a little bit in the last week. Uh, improvements, anything that we want to talk about there? Yeah, just up and down. I mean, we're getting better every day. We're getting tons of valuable reps. Just, you know, it's just so hard to be consistent. So all these reps all spring. Unfortunately, we only got two days left in the spring. It's kind of depressing because we got a lot of young guys that haven't figured it out yet, but they're showing signs and going from one out of every five to maybe one out of every four. Some are one out of every three are doing it right. And again, like today, it was a great example. Like defense did some really good things technically and had success. And on Tuesday, excuse me, on Sunday night, they didn't do the same things in the same exact scenario and had no success. So it's like, okay, I just flew by the seat of my pants and not really even did it my way, really did it no way, just out there hoping to make a play. And then today I actually played with some really sound technique and we got a bunch of stops and we got interceptions and we got forced them to field goals and a bunch of good things happened. So again, and like I would say, players do it their way until they fail and then they listen to us. Like the <laughs> idea that they come in and they, doesn't matter how good a coach you are, like they're gonna keep trying to cut corners and that's what teenage college kids do. And then eventually it's like, okay, it's not working. Maybe I will. And then they start to have success your way and then they buy into it. And then that's, and all young players go through that. Some figure it out quickly. The Rayon Straders of the world figured out pretty quick, like a couple weeks in, and I'm just going to keep doing what they asked me to do, and it seems to work okay. So, and that's what they want. And other kids, they fight City Hall a little longer. So we've had a great spring, 13 practices. We've got a lot of guys out that are key players that are going to be fine, but it's allowed these young guys just pour on reps, more reps than they could ever handle at this point in their careers. But they got to go through it sometime, and every rep they get is insanely valuable. Speaking of reps, uh, he's not getting a ton, but you, I saw Brett out here today just throwing around a little bit. Yeah. Just, maybe just talked about him a little bit. Yeah, no, he's doing good. Obviously, he had a, had a gruesome injury in, in, in the Toledo game, and he's – our medical people and the surgeons obviously did an amazing job, and he is, he is, you know, at least on pace if not significantly ahead of schedule, and he's throwing some seven-on-seven seven and throwing some one-on-ones. He's not ready for a team yet, but – um, it is great for, for us to see him back because he adds a lot of to our confidence level and then just for his own, it's great for him and, and, and knowing how important this is and him getting back out and throwing and completing some balls is pretty awesome. And we haven't talked to you since last Thursday when your contract extension got announced. Uh, you don't have to talk about you, but just the, the stability that brings to Miami football. Yeah, obviously it's, you know, Everybody always asks you how long is your contract, and I always have the same answer: Did we win last Saturday? You know, like, and, and again, that's the reality. Like, it is, it is important. It is awesome. It, the thing is, it's more of, you know, not many people get to their third contract. Not many staffs. Like, I got guys that have been with me for ten years, um, and it, it, the day it's like a little reflection day. You think, okay, when you when you have that day, you think, okay. What was it like 10 years ago? What was it like five years ago? What, and all the ups and downs and all the, the good and the bad and the successes and the failures. And we, we've had tons of successes, but we've had our failures too and disappointments. And, and one thing we feel like we've been consistent, we've grown from things we haven't done well, we've learned from things we haven't done well as players and coaches. And um, we bought into Miami day one. We, I really think we were a good fit with Miami. What Miami stands for, love and honor, and who we are as a staff, I think it's – I don't know what anybody else thinks, but and we've tried, but we've also through you know through ten years, there's a lot of, a lot of trial and error, and a lot of like, I just feel like consistently, 42 and 17 in the MAC, and we're consistently always good. We've had two 500 years in the last seven years in MAC play. I know our non-league schedule is daunting, and we embrace that. We've got a couple of Power Five victories in each of the last two years, um, which is awesome, and it's something we strive for every year. But obviously we play in the MAC, and like we've had two four and four years in the MAC, and those years our starting quarterback missed a, at least half the at least half the conference season. And when we got here and we were 0 for 22, the idea could we be a consistent winner, consistently be a team that's good every year? Not because the MAC is so up and down. You look at the records and the highs and the lows, and we didn't. We just want to be the team that. And again. I always say from like 1945 to 2003, a bad year at Miami was 500. And we want to get back to where a bad year at Miami was 500. And when you look at what, what our staff's done consistently, like, hey, two years ago, we don't have our starter. We go six and six and go to the Bahamas. Well, if that's as bad as it gets, you got, you got a pretty good. And, and we have the right kids that really are great student athletes and do wonderful things on the field, but do wonderful things all the field. So it is a proud moment. And it does make you reflect and think about, wow, 
10 years gone by pretty quick. And then also, it also seems like a lifetime ago when we beat UMass for, for <laughs> to break the streak. It's like, man, it seems so quick, but then at times like UMass seems like another lifetime. So, uh, but we've loved being at Miami. Uh, a lot of guys, my staff have loved being here. It's been great for our families being in Oxford, um, not just working at Miami, but our kids have, you know, my kids grew up here. My kids are in grade school and they're, they're in college now. They're out of college now. So like just, it's, this has been a great family community for us. To, to live in, uh, probably why we're still probably why we're still here, slugging it out. And then Saturday, Spring Showcase, uh, what, fans that come out, what can they expect to see? Um, I think we'll see great action. I think our kids will compete like they always do. They'll fly around. I don't know if football's gonna be hit and miss, like we got a lot of young guys, but the nice thing, if you do come out, you'll see a lot of new faces that will be really good players in Miami. You get to start to know them. Great opportunity for them to play in front of some people and have a little more nerves because a lot of these guys didn't play a year ago that are getting a, the majority of the reps. So, um, again, just and again, for us, just not an opportunity. It's one of our 15 opportunities to get better. So we got to come, not like, oh, it's spring game. We got to come and like, hey, what do I got to do today to improve? Because I'm still young and I'm not a finished product, and I can't waste this day. I got to do something that's going to help my game.